But in the 1990s, as the computers became more powerful, the scientists argued that even though human beings would never be able to understand the complexity, the computers could be used to see hidden underlying patterns and make the chaos manageable. This new idea was called complexity theory. One of its main promoters was the man who had discovered the elementary particles of all matter, quarks. He was called Murray Gell-Mann, and he believed that there were underlying patterns at every level of the universe. Not just in the particles, but in the way people think, in the structure of human societies, and even in the languages they spoke. You're always looking for patterns in nature. Yes. Well, what's so Patterns in the way people think. Patterns in the elementary particles. It's all part of the same way of doing things, I suppose. Trying to spot the law, trying to spot the relationship. The customs of primitive people. Uh, languages and the relations among them. And it's fascinating to try to figure out what these laws are. As complexity theory spread, it seemed to offer a new way of managing societies by using computers to analyse vast amounts of data. That would bypass the failed political ideas that had always led to disaster in the past. But it brought with it a deeply conservative idea that was going to be the foundation of today's computer-dominated world. It said that what you are looking for in the data are the underlying laws that govern the systems as they already exist. You never ask why those systems came to exist and who benefits from them existing. One of the leading complexity scientists insisted that the meaning of any system was irrelevant. I don't understand what meaning is, he said. In science, there is no meaning to anything. It doesn't ask the atom why it is going left when it is subjected to a magnetic field. It just observes and describes. 